Mm. We appear to be live. Excellent. Let's take it live. Boot all four people off there that are waiting so that they can re-log in. <laughs> and with a little luck, they'll actually re-log in. Oh, fuck. that problem all right yeah see now we're back to two we went from four to three to two <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm sure it'll be back now we're at three again mm -hmm. yes we're back at three welcome three Coincidence? I think not! <laughs> there we go. All right. Let's bring up the show notey thingy. Start getting this puppy all wound up and ready to rock and roll. To the best of the abilities. Uh, don't forget your, to share your screen. No, I don't want to do that anymore. You're just going to have to guess. Oh. Hey, thank you. Let's see. What do we got? I have white flies in my greenhouse. They're horrible. Ooh, that's little, not good. They're horrible little critters. They're killing, eating everything. I remember there was a, a major white fly issue last year. Yeah, well, it's been around for a while. I thought I was doing okay, but then when I had Jill checking on the greenhouse yesterday, she said, the white flies are bad, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, crap. So she's bringing over a couple things today to maybe help it out, but... That's I good. Know. I don't know. It's just a real pain in the neck. I'm researching. It's like, well, I've been spraying. But the problem is, is if you spray too much, you can pre you can produce super white flies. Oh, uh, that are immune to your, immune to your bug spray. Not that I've been using. I've been using safer soap spray with insecticide, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to try doing a. Uh, Sulfur bomb in there. So you're gonna let some eggs rot and then crack them? What's that? You're gonna let some eggs rot and then crack them? No, no, wrong kind of sulfur. You get okay. the you get these little sulfur pellets and you put them in a little like uh, oil oil burner thing. You know those oil. Uh, yeah. Misters, demisters. Like a, it's like a little diffuser. dish thing that you like oil handle diffuser. Under? Oil diffusers, yeah, oil diffusers or something similar, and then it smokes, it creates uh, sulfur smoke. Don't be in the room when it's doing it because it'll kill you, but. Oh. Well, breathing in pure sulfur, small sulfur smoke's not good for you. <laughs> so basically, I got to close the greenhouse up, uh, burn it, and let it go. Problem is, it'll kill, it'll kill all the bugs in there, and some of the critters in there are useful. As much as I hate spiders, you know, I, I find them useful in the greenhouse. I try to ignore them. Yeah. You know, but they're not doing their job. They're not. They're not wiping out all the freaking uh, white flies. Maybe there's just too many for them to eat, and they're all full. Mm. Yeah. Well, I find spiders to be a little on the creepy side. I definitely do. They have way too many legs. It's the legs, the eyes, you know. They are creepy little buggers. Usually, though, if they're, if they're outside of my home, I just ignore them. You know, live and let live. But once they're inside. <laughs> yep. Well, I just don't. I don't like reaching the corners of my greenhouse and then a spider all over me or a web all over me. Mm, yeah, that's no fun. So... 
Let's see what I can do with them this weekend when I'm up there. To eliminate the white flies. I gotta get them under control so I can get some plants because I they've wiped out and I gotta find more loofah seeds. I had some loofah plants that were doing quite beautiful, but they managed to completely destroy and eat my loofahs. Ooh. And I really want to glow loofahs, but nobody seems to really have seeds this year. All I need to do is get one crop of loofahs in, and I'll never have to buy seeds again. <laughs> trick is getting them to stay healthy long enough. Yeah, that's the trick. I tried growing them last year and had problems with them last year, too. But each year I learn a little bit more about the bugs and critters that are attacking me, and I learn a little bit more about how to control the little damn things. Experience. I wonder where do white flies? Uh, where do they like breed? Or do they dig into the in the the roots oh. of the plants to breed? Or no, they lay eggs on all your plant leaves. Okay, so lay them on the plant leaves. Okay. Yeah, and then their little pupae, volvu pupae things, the little small versions of them, are the ones that suck all the sap from your plants. Aha. Uh -huh. And it prevents the plants from growing, causes the leaves to fall off and the plant to die. I see. And I want to sell well, plant starts, so I need to have them working, doing the things they're supposed to do. <laughs> I was thinking, like, if they laid their eggs in the dirt or something, you might be able to dis disrupt their, uh, their yeah. nesting or their eggs or something. But yeah. it's on the leaves, and you're already spraying and everything, then. Well, they do live in the dirt, too, occasionally, but mostly they're on your plants. Poor plants. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't be so bad if, if, if flies didn't breed so fast. Yeah, they've got a three-week life cycle. Uh, so they're worse than bunnies. Yep, pretty much. Well, luck I'll be able to get them under control and still manage to get plants grown for the uh, market, which is in six weeks, I believe now. Barely and the sulfur plants. doesn't do anything to plant? No. Doesn't That's cool. Plants, unless you do it too often, too much. Mm. Plants need sulfur to a certain extent. Some of your fertilizers have sulfur in them. What about things like bay leaves? Because I know that if you uh, burn stuff like bay leaves, it'll help with other bugs. Yeah, well, I don't know. I tried smoking them out with in, with uh, sage and other things, and I've, I've tried all the natural stuff. It's time to get serious. Mm. All right, it's time for a little music. Carry us to the show.
Time. So let's get this puppy wound up and a running. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for WordPress plugins A to Z, not Z. Hmm. Hopping in with the best WordPress plugins. It's episode 556, and we have plugins for Author for Woo, Gift Hunting. Secret Slide Tune, Revolutionizing Sliders, Sliders Package, Removing Archives, and Classic Press Options all coming up on WordPress Plugins from A to Z. WordPress. It's the most popular content management and website solution on the internet. And with over 80,000 plugins to choose from, how do you separate the junk from the gems? Join us for a weekly, unrehearsed conversation about the latest and greatest in WordPress plugins. This is <coughs> WordPress Plugins from A to Z. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be hiding out there on the globe today. Coming to you direct from the brewery overlook in beautiful Victoria, British Columbia. I'm John Overall, and with me is the ever-lovely... Amber Overall. And we have a usual great show for you today. Of course, before we get too far down the pike here, don't forget this is a value for value show, and we look forward to everyone providing some value back. And we'll talk about that later, what that value can be. Also, remember to hang around to the end of the show for the Q&A segment with Amber. It's always entertaining. For those listening on the podcast, you only get part of it. you got to come over to the YouTube channel, watch the video there to catch the rest of it, get the, get the complete fill of it. All of that being said, I guess I should. Thank you for sharing, John. Now get down from that soapbox. <laughs> this is number 16 of 52 episodes for 2022. Hopefully everyone out there is getting some decent sun. Over here on the lovely wet coast, we've had a string of beautifully rainy days with a tad bit of wind trying to knock out our power. You know, quite normal weather for this time of year for us. But... That's not to say we haven't had some really nice days over the past week as well. We actually got a pretty decent amount of sun. It looks like it's trying to be sunny out today, which is pretty cool. Um, well, spring storms are, you know, they're to be expected no matter where you are, I think. But, it's, you know, when, it, when it's stormy outside, it's a great time to start on that spring cleaning because it keeps you inside but still manages to get something done. If the power goes out, you can just throw on a candle. It works. At least I think that's what everyone wants to do, right? Yeah, Spring you cleaning? Know. You never know. Don't forget to drop the media for a while every week. It does help with sleep. I swear it does. Rinse and repeat as often as needed. Absolutely. Please, can everybody be quiet? Please be quiet. Shut up! 
Thank you. And now the WordPress news with John Overall. Whatever. <laughs> First one I have is the WordPress vulnerability report for April 6, 2022. There's quite a bit in the list today, so I'm only going to name off the ones that were most easily recognizable to me. Um, they seem like they're pretty popular in general. Make sure that uh, you give this list a check over yourself. You'll find the link in the notes. And keep an eye out for the updates for the plugins that are currently set as a no known fix, because those updates will come out. Uh, the ones that I recognized uh, pretty easily was ULeak Security and Mon Monitoring, Nimble Page Builder, Clipper, Master Elements, Users Ultra, Testimonial Slider. There are a lot more, so as I said, come, uh, come by, check this list out. It's always worth looking at. Mm, always good to keep up, up to date on what the vulnerabilities are. Mm. Next one up is WordPress.com increases traffic and storage limits on the new plans that they just released due to an overwhelmingly negative feedback on the initial rollout. So I don't know how many people have, are actually aware of this, probably a lot considering the amount of feedback they got, but on April 1st, uh, WordPress.com decided to change their plans, bringing their options from five plans down to two plans, free and pro. Now, first, for their free and pro, they actually uh, they dropped the amount of storage that they got, and they put a cap on the amount of visitors that were allowed to be there. So they dropped the storage to, um, let's see, they, they dropped the storage down to 500 megabytes and they capped the visits at 10K visitors for free and then 100K visitors on Pro. Due to the extremely negative feedback that they got, they have upped things so that there is no cap on visitors and there is now a gigabyte of storage. Although that's still a lot less than the three gigs of storage that people were able to get beforehand. Yep. So this is a this is an issue, and it's a good thing to note. They at least fixed it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Don't know if they'll fix it anymore. I'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, one of the things I was reading about this is uh, part of the reason it's suggested, or you know, people think that the reason they might have done this changes is because they didn't realize they shot themselves in the foot, foot with Gutenberg. Because ah. they, used to, they used to make most of their money with uh, premium themes and other things for WordPress.com. And with Gutenberg, the premium themes are no longer needed. So people were dropping that sort of thing to save themselves a few bucks. Makes sense. And uh, also, a lot of the Gutenberg stuff has changed the entire way it, op it operates. And uh, all of their little extras they used to sell everyone are no longer of value because they're no longer needed with the Gutenberg. So basically, they shot themselves in the foot with Gutenberg. And they got to figure they like had, it. And they had to figure out a way to make money again. Now, granted, when they went to the pro here, they did go from what used to be a $25 plan per month now down to 15. So it, it, there's some compromises, but I, you know, I, I think that they pretty much really shot themselves in the foot with Gutenberg and they had to, they had to regroup. That sounds, that sounds logical. Yeah. It, it's, it's always about money. <laughs> Next one up is WP migrate DB has rebranded to <clears throat> WP migrate. Yeah, they're a good company. Hi, Hamdian. Good to see you. Hello. Yeah, it's, it's a good company. I, I like WP Migrate. I use it. I still have a license for it. I use it quite regularly. Not regularly as I used to. For a while there, I used it constantly and all the time. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it does, make, it does make more sense that it's WP Migrate because it used to be just for databases, but then they've added so much more to it now. Mm -hmm. Well, they are also adding a few more things. Um the most recent release, 2.3, mm -hmm. they've added the ability to migrate from one multi-site to another and a new interface with indicators showing theme and plugin version differences. 
They had that. They had. They didn't have the theme and plug-in versions, but they had the ability to go from multi-site to another one for quite some time. Hmm. They must have improved it somehow, but... Uh, I guess that's what it was, is that they improved it, because um, they talk about here how it's been added. So I yeah. thought that wasn't an option before. No, because I've done it. I've migrated from multi-site to multi-site with it. That, that was the whole reason I got it, was I was dealing with a lot of multi-sites, and I needed to either export a single site out of multi-site or import a site into multi-site or go from multi-site to multi-site. And this was the only plugin that could actually do that task and keep everything intact. Oh, multi-site well, is a nightmare in its database. For people who go looking for it, if if they're looking for the, what is it, DB at the end? Yeah, it's, it's not there that, anymore, but it's still the same plugin. Yeah, just look for uh, Delicious Brains. That's the company yes. that makes it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love their company name, Delicious Brains. So. Me too. Uh, Hemdian said, "Good saves us money." Yes. Yep. Yeah, Gutenberg. It, it's saving. It's saving everyone money. It's but it's costing the companies money. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I think they. I, I think they're starting to realize they might have shot themselves in the foot with this. <laughs> you know, and it's too late now. But well, speaking of Gutenberg. The next bit of news I have is Gutenberg 12.9 adds block locking UI, automatic pattern registration, and full theme exports. This is being called a beefy release. They have packed a lot into it. There's a lot of additions, and mm -hmm. the most noticeable ones are that users can now choose from a suggested list of date formats or even add a custom one for the post date block. Yeah. Themes can add blocks to a no results container block when query returns no posts. Mm. And uh, tag cloud block now has minimum and maximum size controls. There's a lot more. Uh, the, they're pretty much all listed in this article. So if you're really excited about this, you'll want to go check this article out to get the, be the, the more in-depth information. Yeah, and keep in mind that this is for the Gutenberg plugin add-on. This is mm -hmm. not for the Gutenberg that's in the core of WordPress. What this yeah. plugin, though, this is where they experiment with stuff before they push it into the core. So some of these things will find their way into the WordPress core. So, so if you're not using the Gutenberg plugin, it has no impact on you. Next up, Jetpack 10.8 introduces QR code post sharing and adds Openverse Media Provider. So there has been a serious uptick in QR code popularity over these past couple of years, and a lot of companies I've noticed are adding QR codes into their melting pot. Yeah. Jetpack has added QR codes, and they've also noticed that users can download as a PNG image and share it on social media, which I thought was an interesting thing. Yeah, well, the interesting thing about QR codes is they're easily fabricated, you know, what you could have fun with, and they're messed up easily, too, with a uh, black oh, yeah. or black marker. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you really wanted to mess with people that are using their phones to check in with QR codes at different places, you come along and you, you print a QR code exactly the right size as they're scanning, and you stick your QR code over the top of it. The, scam, yep. the scams like that are happening already, but just, you know... Which is... Problem Which is QR why codes. the QR codes didn't become all that popular in the '90s. <laughs> no, it didn't come all popular in the, in the. It didn't. It didn't come out until the mid 2000s. Oh, There's sorry, mid 2000s. I'm getting I, my years mixed up. When when it came out, it it kind of sort of got popular, but then it was dropped pretty fast because it was well, just way too easy to mess with them. No, it wasn't that. The problem was no? is the readers lacked. To, oh, use it, okay. to, to use it on your phone required you to put a specialized app in there, and then it didn't always work correctly. It was like, I tried them. I tried working into them. I even printed a few and tried using the QR codes. I thought they were a great idea. I didn't think about the aspect of how the scammers would use them. And it's only been in the last ah. year, year or two that all the aspects of how the scammers use them has kicked into full gear. <laughs> no. So, yeah. Well, that's pretty useful, I suppose. But the problem is you'd have to use uh, Jetpack. There's other ways to do it besides Jetpack, which are less intensive on your website. Yeah. 
Another thing that Jetpack is, has introduced is support for Openverse as a new media provider, mm -hmm. which this will allow users to search through its collection of 600 million openly licensed media directly in the media library. Nice. That can yeah. be useful. I'm sure there's other ways you can get to the Openverse besides uh, Jetpack, though. Yep. Uh, next up, Webman Design launches Abs, additional styles for native WordPress box. So I've noticed that there's been a lot of stylized blocks that are coming out these days. And this one has taken a mildly different approach where instead of offering pre-made blocks, they give you the ability to register custom styles to enhance those packaged with WordPress. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, WordPress core. So this, I think this seems like a neat idea. And I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot more of these coming up. This is the second one that I've noticed like this. Okay. You know what? I think that's going to be the replacement for the custom themes. That makes sense. I mean, you've got the you know all the custom themes out there, but I think the 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 word the WordPress blocks and the uh, um, pattern blocks and everything else. That's gonna that's gonna be the replacement business for the uh, custom theme in the uh, page builder business. So anyone looking to get themselves into a business, learn this and learn how to market your blocks. You know, create some unique ones and find ways to protect them and make a few bucks. This I Makes think this sense. might this might this might be the next business to replace the theme business that's being killed. Last one I've got for everyone today is what senior developers do and do not want to see in your resume. So I brought this forward because I know that a lot of people are kind of dusting off their resumes and starting to hand them out again. And this is a very entertainingly written article. And the writer explains how resumes that he was required to go through wound up in the death pile how the resumes made it past the death pile, and what caught his attention to the call pile. It's a great read for anybody who is looking at dusting off their resumes. It'll help get you kind of in the right mind frame and has some great advice as well. Yeah. Something to check out. All righty. And then we've got our extras, which there's some WordPress stuff, some hacker stuff, and, of course, a couple of more entertaining things that I threw in there. Absolutely. And, of course, right at the top, we like to talk about those that support the show. It's time to donate to WP. Plugins. A to Z. This is where we like to talk about those that have supported the show with their time, talent, or treasure. And we like to first kick off by talking about those that have supported the show with their talent. And then talent in particular being the artwork we use for the show. We use different artwork for each and every episode. We're one of the few podcasts out there that change our artwork every single show. And the artwork is provided by you, our supporters, our producers of the show. And, uh, of course, Greg's Graphics has been providing us with artwork for quite some time. He's really good about kicking up a few pieces for us to keep us ahead of the curve. And this week's is a awesome-looking bunny trying to figure out what the hell is going on. So I really liked it. It's a great shot, great photo, great use of the colors. Kind of to lead us up to Easter for next week, because next week's show will be Easter time. Who knows? Maybe we'll have some Easter egg stuff for you here to <laughs> toss in for plug-ins. Anyway, thanks again, Greg. We greatly appreciate your support of the show with the artwork. And if you're an artist out there and you just need an outlet, hey, send some artwork our way. Just go to WPPlugins, A to Z dot com slash artwork to submit your artwork to the show. And, you know, who knows? Maybe you can knock Greg out of the top spot and uh, start helping produce some, addition, some really cool artwork for the show. And if you're interested, you can go check out all the artwork we have. We've got a lot of artwork in there. Oh, wrong button. Didn't want to go full screen. We wanted to <laughs> exit out of that. There we go. Let's click it out. And you can see all the artwork we've had over the past couple of years. Lots of really great artwork has showed up here. So, and you can go check out all the different artwork, folks. So, all right. Thank you very much. And we also like to recognize those that support the show with their treasure. 
And that treasure is anything from a few bucks to $50 or more. If you donate $50 or more, hey, you get an executive producer credit, a note read out, all that great stuff. We don't have executive producers right now, but we do like to thank those that kick us a few bucks here and there. It always remains anonymous, and we greatly appreciate your recognition of the show by donating a few bucks here and there. So thank you very much to all of those who have done that. You know who you are. Thank you very much. Another way you can support the show is with some time. You know, we always need work done on the website, some tweaks here and there. Could also use some promotions, you know, get out there, you know, basically, you know, show, showcase uh, WP plugins, tell them how great you think it is, you know, get on social media or spread the word. Or if you've got plugin suggestions for reviews or you've got articles, news information you'd like to submit, please just click the links in the show note to submit that information and we'll get it into the show for you. All right, that pretty much covers all of that. So it is time to head into the depths of plug-in depravity, what everyone comes here looking for. Covering up our plugins, and we don't have anything from Classic Press, so we'll just skip over that at the moment and dive right into our WordPress plugins. All right, first one I have here for you is called Advanced Product Author for WooCommerce. And this is a plugin that will allow you, if you've got multiple editors or multiple people putting content in your WooCommerce site, you know that every person that puts it in with their own account, it goes in under their account name. Well, this plugin here makes it easy for you to change the author of the post in WooCommerce. You just plug it in, turn it on, and then what happens is it adds a little thing on the bottom when you're creating your post to where they can choose the author name from the drop down of available authors in the website. You can't put a unique author name in there, but you can choose from any other user that's available on the website to make sure the products are attributed to maybe you might have a central account on the website, but you don't want everybody using that central account at the same time allow the posts and the con and the the content and the products to be attributed to the central author of the website. All right. So other than that, it's a great little plugin, something you'll want to check out. It is called Advanced Product Author for WooCommerce and I give it a four dragon rating. I can see that being very useful. Yeah. Uh, first one I have up is Slider Revolution. So this is, you won't find this plugin in the in the WordPress repository. You have to go to the site itself in order to get this. There is no free version, only the paid or pro version. However, this is a truly amazing plugin for sliders, and it's not just a slider plugin. You are able to create full pages, media content, sections, or simply use this throughout your site just to work on your site. Everything made in this plugin is responsive, and you are able to choose the way it responds, whether it's classic linear resizing, intelligent inheriting, or manual custom sizes. I really, really like this, and it reminds me, like the setup of this plugin reminds me a bit of Photoshop that I remember seeing when I was younger, and I know that when I was younger, I found Photoshop much easier to understand. It took me about half hour to get a good grasp on how to use this, and after that, I was I was off. I had a lot of fun going through this and using it. I think this is one of my favorite plugins I've come across so far, just in overall. And it's rare, but uh, even though it's a paid uh, paid only version, I rate this at five dragons. <laughs> It is a great plugin. I've been using it off and on for years. I usually end up falling back to it whenever I've got a particularly difficult slider to build for a client. And in particular, one of the things that Slider Revolution does that most other slider plugins don't do is that image in the background. It'll actually con completely resize it in proportion to the screen size that it is on. Mm -hmm. or you can or you can adjust it so it makes other adjustments along the way. It just it allows so many fine tuning details to it. So it saves you a lot of headache and grief. So if you're looking for the ultimate in slider plugins, check out Slider Revolution. 
<clears throat> All right, the next one I've got for you. This one was kind of fun. I kind of liked it. Um, I should have put it in for next week, but I decided to keep it for this week. It's called Gift Hunt. And what it's really great for is it's a really great tool for marketing on your website. In particular, it's useful for those that uh, have e-commerce stores. Because what it allows you to do is you create a gift hunt on your website. And basically what happens is after someone's been on your website for X amount of time you set or they visited so many pages, a little icon pops up on the page like an Easter egg or a gift box or, you know, whatever icons they have available in the free version. Now, I did use the free version here. They do have a premium version that allows you to upload your old icons and to expand it a little bit more. But on the whole, I found it to be really great. It, you, it allows you to collect emails. They got, you got to collect their name and their email address before they can get the gift. And that gift can be anything from a coupon to maybe you have a giveaway of some sort. But you want to give them some sort of useful gift. And uh, it's another way to improve upon your marketing on your website and collect more emails for that ever, ever ultimate email list. Really great tool. It works very, very well. And you can set it for a gift for any time of year, Halloween, Christmas, Easter, of course, being the most prominent, or just set it for a random time of the year for people to find a gift on your website. Go check it out. It's called Gift Hunt. And against my better rules, I'm still going to give this one a five dragon rating. Because the free version was everything you needed. Nice. By the way, Slider Revolution says, yeah, up one dragon from last review in 2020. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys have, you guys have made some improvements. Thanks for being on the show. <laughs> uh, next one I have up here is Sliders Pack, Image Slider, Post Slider, ACF Gallery Slider. So this is an interesting plugin. It does not have just one style of a slider builder, but instead comes with 10 different styles all rolled up into one convenient plugin. And a few of those have gallery options as well. Each style of slider and or gallery is a version of pre-made templates, each one a different style for you to choose from. All are responsive and work well if you are looking to insert contents and let it loose. You will find limitations in the free templates within each style as there is a pro version. Though the free templates are pretty and they're, they're very professional looking, I'll give them that as well, and they're worth having a look through. So, sliders pack, image slider, post slider, ACF gallery, quite the mouthful there. I rate it at four dragons. Alrighty, we'll go check that one out. Okay, the last one I've got for you here is Secret Image Slide and Tune. And I should have loaded up the web page for this one here. Oh, yes, I remember where I put it now. Hang on. It's a such second. a fun one. Oh, uh, this, <laughs> one, this one here was loads of fun because um, I've got to hang on a second here. Let me get this page up. <laughs> because I was just I was just playing around with it and it was just it was just tons of fun. And basically what it does is you load up the plugin, you go choose an image. Now it comes with a really cool default image of a Velociraptor. <laughs> and it comes with a Velociraptor sound in it. And basically you set up a set of keystrokes, whatever keystrokes you want to have into this. And when people hit those keystrokes, it kicks across an image for you. And once you hit those keystrokes, oh, wrong, wrong keystrokes. Hang on. I had to remember what <laughs> I put in here. You might want to make sure they're easy keystrokes to remember. Or, you know, ones that happen often. There we go. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, is when you're doing it and setting it up, it does have one issue, like when you're setting your secret code, like they, they haven't come up with a default one, arrow up, arrow up, arrow down, arrow down, arrow left, arrow right, arrow left, arrow right, B and A. And you have to have 10 keystrokes. It has to be exactly 10 keystrokes. And before it will work, it won't work of less than that, and it won't let you put in any more. 
That was one thing I did discover. It was kind of interesting in that basically you, if you can create a 10 letter word or word phrase or something that people might accidentally type in, like maybe they're filling out a form or something, you know, you could really <laughs> have some fun with them that way. And uh, all of a sudden it kicks off across the screen and anyone not expecting it might be started a little bit. So anyway, you can have some fun with it. It was really cool. Just a basic fun plugin. And uh, I give it a five dragon rating. <laughs> And you could upload oh, did, did, it. Uh, sorry, I thought I thought everything dropped for a second. I guess nothing dropped. My bad. Yeah. And, of course, you can upload any image you want and any sound file you want. That is so cool. Yeah. Uh-oh, I lost my spot. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so uh, last one I have is Smart Archive Page Remove. I thought this would be a little more useful than it is, but I mean, if uh, what what this plugin does is it removes the WordPress auto-generated archive pages like the tags, category, author, etc. It removes them from your site. Once you install and activate this plugin, uh, you'll find the archive pages under your under your own settings, and it'll take you to a page where you get to choose which of the auto-generated archive pages you remove. And then whenever people try searching for that particular page, they'll get a 404 error. And that's all you can do. It doesn't give you the ability to replace the archive page, hmm. which I thought was what it would do, but unfortunately, no. Hmm. It is completely free. And if this is what you need, you just need those pages gone, nope, then this is the perfect plugin for you. Yeah. If you're looking to replace the, the pages, I don't think this plugin will be the right option for you, though. Yep. Absolutely. But, uh, mode archive page remove. I rate it at four dragons. Yeah, I'm not certain what the there's there could be some benefits from removing some archive pages. You know, I can see the benefits of sometimes removing the author's archive or or um, certain slug archives, but. Um, just to remove them, though, doesn't... I don't know of all the benefits you would get from that. At any rate, something to check out if you need to remove archive pages and you don't want to go through the coding, because you can also code that into your site so they don't show up either. All right. Looks like we have listener questions. Let's check this out. We, we do. Could, we could use a jingle for this point. That's a <laughs> hint to all those out there that do jingles. All right. <laughs> Listener questions, and the question being, I have a domain name as well as others to use in conjunction with my main domain. They would be for different purposes, but still have to do with my main domain. When I build the site and use these other domains, am I better off having them, the other domains, open in a new tab or just go to that domain? Are there any downfalls to doing a combination of the two? Can I make each domain a page within my site? Thanks for the advice. Uh, show is helpful. Keep up the great work. Still learning. Um, okay, so you've got several questions here. It's a confusing paragraph. <laughs> okay, you, you have domains that are in conjunction with other main domains. Um, okay, so you got domain A. Like domain your John a. Overall site. Well, my John Overall site has, I also own johnoverall.com, .net, .ca, .biz. But I have each. I have two of them. My .ca and .com are my primary website. My .biz I use strictly for um, for some some temporary stuff and other things. And my .net site I can't remember what I use it for now. But uh, if you're different purposes, when you build the site and use these other domains, like if you're building one site to use those other domains, you park those domains on top of that site and you choose which one is going to be the primary. Like if you go to .ca, you end up on .com. It just automatically redirects. You know, um, the other domains open in a new tab. Why would you have domains open in another tab? Are you doing something different with them? That was the part that really confused me. I don't understand that. Um, you know, uh, or just go to that domain. Well, if it's a separate, if it's a separate WordPress install, you just you just open that one up and do whatever work you're going to do in that one. 
if it's the same WordPress install, yeah. You could make each domain a page in your website. I have covered plugins in the past. I imagine those plugins still exist. Um, and I have used them. They're very useful. In fact, I think I'm using one now over at the Rogues Tavern. Um, or I might just be using re redirects. If you if you were to put in Height Club for Men, you will end up on the section of the Rogues Tavern that is dedicated to the Height Club for Men. And then, but you're in, but you're inside the Rogues Tavern website. And once you click out of that, you you strictly you strictly stay in the Rogues Tavern website. So you can, and there are plugins to do it or regular redirects to do it to have it for specific pages have a domain pointed to a specific page on a website it takes a little bit of finagling to get it to work right but uh, that is a very useful thing if you've got multiple domains and you want to do different things for like marketing like there are companies that have funnel pages that have a specific domain or create a subdomain that go only to that one page for dealing with the funnel of, of collecting uh, information from users and visitors. So, yeah, uh, other than that, I'm not really certain what you're asking here. It is a bit confusing. So resubmit, a little bit clearer, and I'll be happy to answer it in more depth. Uh, and Ian has a question too. Hmm. Couldn't you just set a redirect to hide archive pages? Yes, you could. Yes, you could. That's pretty much what that plugin does, I bet. Seems like it, yeah. So there's lots of ways to hide your archive pages. Lots of ways to do that if you're trying to hide archive pages. All right, let's go talk about our contest. It's a contest, contest. WordPress plugins from A to Z. There we go. Our contests are powered by the Simple Giveaways plugin, who kindly provide us with the premium version for our contests. A really great plugin. It keeps improving. Sometimes I'm not able to keep ahead of all the improvements they put into it, but uh, it's been really great. I've been using it since it was brand new off the line. I think it had less than 10 users when I found it. So much like most of our plugins are very brand new and some of them grow up to be very nice. So go check out Simple Giveaways if you're going to uh, have any giveaways on your website. Uh, of course, a big thank you to Steve Goodtime, Brant Matthews for that jingle. And our contest we just finished up is the lifetime single domain license from Interactive Geomaps. It was valued at $49. And uh, we do have a winner. And it was Jason L. Congratulations, Jason L. on winning the contest. If you're a developer out there, you got premium licenses, and this is a hint if you're still out there, Re Slider Revolution. Hey, send us a mm -hmm. license. We'll give it away. We'll create a contest that runs for four weeks. You get talked about every week on the show for four weeks. It's a great deal. Basically free advertising from you for you because, you know, the, the license doesn't really cost you all that much unless you get somebody that really needs lots of support. Other than that... <laughs> It doesn't cost you all that much. And we're more than happy to do it because it helps us kick out some really great contests, giving away great products. We've, we've had lots of really great plugins over the last few years of having this contest. All right, so congratulations again, Jason L. And uh, we will have a, another contest set up for you as soon as we have another license in the queue to set it all up and get it functioning. All righty. All right, time to cover up a few things before we go into the Q&A segment. Plugins we covered up in this episode were Advanced Product Author for WooCommerce, which I gave a 4-2, Gift Hunt, which I gave a 5-2, and the Secret Image Slide and Tune, which I gave a 5-2. And I covered Slider Revolution, which I rated at 5 Sliders Pack, Image Slider, Post Slider, ACF Gallery Slider, which I rated at 4, and Smart Archive Page Remove, which I rated at 4. Absolutely. And don't forget, those that are still listening, hit that like button. Always appreciated. All right. We do have a meetup that is planned for June 25th. The... Uh, Information will appear on our website uh, later this month or early next month. Uh, 
Uh, it's where you can go to and RSVP for that uh, meetup because it will be RSVP only. We're only going to have a limited number of people because it's being held at the Oasis. So we got a limited number of people that can show up for it. And it is a multi-podcast meetup. It's a No Agenda, WP Plugins, and a uh, Rogue's Tavern podcast meetup because, you know, we're involved in three different podcasts. You know, I'm very not exciting. Actually, yeah, very exciting. We'll have a whole diverse group of people showing up. Although some of them, I'm sure, listen to all three. There's some. <laughs> There's a few. There'll be a few people in there. All right. It is time now for... It's question and answer time. With Amber. Mm -hmm. Before I get started, if anyone out there has any questions they'd like to have asked on the show, send them in to me at amber at wppro.ca, and I will get them up here, and we'll see if we can stump my dad. First question is... Say you're looking for a specific plugin, and while searching, you find about 30 right off the bat that seem like they could work. What is the best process to do in order to test them and not overtax your energy while testing them? Okay. I would think it would be better what's the best process to choose which ones to test. <laughs> well, the process to choose which ones to test is to look at them and see in the... In the um, explanation them to see if they actually have the attributes that you're looking for but if you find like 30 that seem to have the attributes you're looking for yeah well then the pro the, the pro there's only one process to test them you got to have yourself a dev site or a sandbox site that you can load them up real quick and then see if it see how quick and easy it is to use you know that's the process to test them there is no there is no shortcut to testing them you know, the thing that I've developed over the years is a shortcut on which ones to choose to be worthy of testing. And it's very rare that that one that doesn't fall under the criteria is worthy of testing. And what that is, is it's not so much the description of what they do. It's the images of the uh, dashboard that they build for it. Okay. Because if you look at the images of the dashboard, you can look through those in just a matter of a couple of minutes to see if it's got the components in that that are testable. Now, you might not always be able to see them clearly, but initially you'll see, okay, well, it seems to have this and this and this and this and that. I want to check for this. Okay, this one, I'll load this one up and test it. And then you'll know in a couple of minutes. You should be able to find out in under five minutes, five to ten minutes, of uh, reading it, throwing it up, and testing it. You should have uh, under five to ten minutes to see if it's worthy of the next half an hour of, uh, of actual work to make it go. Because there are some that they just they don't provide you with any, any dev image or dashboard images, or they provide you with one, and it doesn't help you beyond that. You know, it's like you, you – because the descriptions can be the best descriptions in the world, but descriptions don't always make sense. So, and – yeah, sometimes they have pictures of the finished product you can make with this plugin. Like, mm -hmm. say, if it's a slider plugin, but yeah. they don't really have pictures of anything else. Yeah, and so there's no point. You really need to have, you really need to know what's going to happen in the dashboard because the dashboard of, of whatever plugin is going to make or break it as to how easy or difficult it's going to be to use. And the idea is, unless you, you know, unless you're a coder and you'd like to go in and change things, you want it to be as easy as possible. And especially if you're going to hand it off to a client, you want to make sure it's easy, easy, easy as possible to use. So, makes sense. Okay. Uh, next question: If your site is having troubles moving at a decent pace, how do you figure out what's causing it? Oh God, that list is. <laughs> extenuously long. I mean, you start by you start by seeing what plugins you have installed, trying to figure out if you've got conflicting plugins that are there. Um, start by seeing what your internet connection is, what your server's connection is, you know, to the best of your ability. You know, unless you're running your own servers, you're kind of limited to whatever the server company has provided for you. Um, let's see. Um, you know, I, I, there, there is, um, I haven't used them in a while, but there's testing tools out there on the internet to test speeds. Um, 
GT Metrics, I think, was one I used to use quite regularly. I haven't used it in quite a while. I haven't really done any uh, speed tests on websites, but there are speed testers out there for websites that'll tell you how everything's loading. And basically what you want to do is you want to go use one of those, and it will show you all the files that are being downloaded um, cause, that might be causing problems on your site. Now, well, they show you every file that's being downloaded on a page and where it's coming from. And they'll give you some ideas on how long it took to download each and every one of those files. Uh, one of the biggest things that slows down websites is is loading extraneous content, content outside of your website, such as Google Analytics or other things, because it's got to go to Google to get that information to download it. And it gets databases. Or for those that like using uh, web fonts, you know, web fonts can really slow down your website because it's got to fetch those web fonts from another server somewhere. You know, so there, there's so many things out there. Images, you know, um, you know, trying to figure it out, it, it can take hours or days to figure out exactly what's slowing down a website. So, so it's just one of those things you've got to you've got to spend some time with. I'm like, I used to do a lot of speed stuff on websites, but I quit doing that about eight, nine months ago. Um, I quit I quit hiring myself out for that kind of work because it was just so frustrating and uh, it was hard to get people to pay for the time involved. Maybe I just wasn't Makes finding, I might, I, I might not have been finding the right clients, so. Maybe you weren't finding the right clients, but it's hard for people to be willing to uh, pay up for something that they don't understand the amount of effort that goes into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can be. All right, read out your last question. We'll cut to the chase and we'll come back to it. Say the issue is causing your site, to, the, the issue that is causing your site to have loading issues or logging issues is a plugin you desperately need in order to keep your work going. For example, the plugin causing the issue is the only slider you have found that works for what you need. What are you to do? Okay. That will be a very entertaining one, and uh, we'll <laughs> come back to that after we let a girl take us on out of here. So don't go away, folks that are listening on YouTube. Reminders for the show. All show notes can be found at WPPluginsAtoZ.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the newsletter for more useful information delivered directly to your inbox. WP Plugins A to Z is a show that offers honest and unbiased reviews of plugins created by developers because you support the show. Help keep the show honest and unbiased by going to wppluginsatoz.com slash donate and set the donation level that fits your budget. Help us make the show better for you by subscribing and reviewing the show at Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and in the iTunes Store. You can also leave us a review on our Facebook page using wppluginsatoz.com slash Facebook. You can also watch the show live on YouTube, check out the screencasts and training videos, and remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications of all new videos. Follow the show on Twitter at WPPluginsAtoZ. John can also be reached at his website, johnoverall.com, or email him directly, john at wppro.ca. Thanks for joining us, and have a great day. Thanks for listening to the show. This show is copyrighted by johnoverall.com. So until next time, have yourselves a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be out there on the globe today. Dan had a couple of comments on that last one. Uh, you can optimize your images, your caching, plus Cloudflare, remove excess plugins, simplify pages, and offload any video similar content to a CDN, content delivery network. Yeah, those things can be done too. Optimizing images is one I used to do. I, well, I do it automatically now. I can't remember. I think I use Smush because I have a license for it. And uh, and it optimizes my images as they get uploaded. Caching. Caching is so varied. Um, there's lots of caching out there. 
some caching plugins work very well. Others make a mess of your site. Uh, Cloudflare, I understand, works very well. I haven't used Cloudflare. Actually, I tried to use Cloudflare, and I got tired of it, and I heard that they've been doing a lot of changes lately. So you, if you use Cloudflare, you got to keep up with their constant changes that they're making. So um, remove excess plugins. It depends on your plugins, and you know depends on how badly you need the plugins. Of course, if you if you don't have plugins turned off, they should have no impact on your site. They're just security holes. So you got to look through your plugins and see: Do I really need this plugin? Do I really need to do this? You know, simplify your pages. Absolutely, simplify your pages is a great one. And of course, offload all video and similar content to a CDN. That means. Um, like, uh, don't do what we do in that uh, all of our podcasts are contained on our website. You know, um, you got to have your own server for that because if I was renting server space somewhere, I'd be in a world of hurt because, you know, I have 556 or 555 episodes plus probably close to 700 episodes, including all my interviews and the other shows I've done for WP plugins all on all on my server and they take up a lot of space and of course you know if when when it when we get hammered really hard with listeners it'll slow down the site a little bit because everybody's downloading a file at the same time so yeah yeah and it's generally around a 50 meg file 50 to 100 meg file each time i upload it so so yeah and video i never host my own video never Video is the worst thing you can possibly put on your own website. You want your video hosted at some hosting company, be it be it YouTube, Vimeo. Um, um, I can't remember BitChute, Odyssey, Rumble, any of those places. That's where you want to put your video. So, lots of other ways to do it. All right, on to the last question. <clears throat> Say the issue causing your site it, to have loading issues or logging in issues is a plugin you desperately need in order to keep your work going. Example, the plugin causing the issue is the only slider you have found that works for you for what you need. What are you to do? Well, if it's causing issues, it's usually be causing issues because it's conflicting with some other plugin you have on your website. And if this is the one you desperately need, what you need to do is find out what other plugin it's conflicting with. And determine, once you find that other plugin, determine do I need this plugin or not? If you really need that plugin to work with the main plugin that you really got to have, then you got to contact one or both those plugin developers and see if they can learn how to play together nicely. Um, that's really all you can do. Uh, if you've got a, because, Plugins, off, it's been rare case where I've loaded up just a single plugin outside of the WordPress core stuff. It's been a rare case where that one plugin causes an issue. It's usually only in conjunction with some other plugin on your website that the other plugin is trying to do the same thing as the plugin you want to use. Or they're both kicking out similar code or conflicting code. You know, one of them saying turn left, the other saying turn right. And if you go straight, it's a brick wall. So... <laughs> It's it's basically that's what happens. So you're you're looking at on here figuring out where the conflict is, and the conflict is rarely ever with WordPress core. It's very rare that it's WordPress core. It's always going to be a, another plugin or some other tweak you've done to your website that you'll have to change. So, so that's what you do. You end up you end up reaching out to the plugin developer to see if he can help you with. Oh, you also got to remember it could be a theme too. It could be, hey. it could, could be a theme causing problems. So, and again, if you switch to the WordPress core theme, problems can go away because it's usually pretty rare that the WordPress core theme interferes with it. It's usually something else a theme developer's created in his theme that'll conflict with the plugin. So those are the areas you got to check. You got to check the conflict with either another plugin or the theme you're using. And then you have to determine which one's got to go or if you can get the plugin developer to fix that or the theme developer or the uh, other plugin developer to fix their conflict. So, All right. And Hemdian had also to say he uses W3 Cache plus Cloudflare. You know, WP Cache is a good plugin, but I can never get the damn thing to work correctly. I tried many times. I found it. I found it, you know, a pain. I used um. Oh, what was the one? What's the one I use for? I've been using off and on. Um, 
WP Comet is what I've been using, WP Comet. It was a really great one, easy to set up. Problem is, is the problem I've discovered in caching plugins is periodically they just run off the rails. Really? Yeah, I, I don't know why. Maybe it's just me and the, I, the AI hates me, <laughs> you know, but... I find they run off the rails from time to time, and then I have to yank all the I have to yank all the caching out of the site to get it running well again, and then I have to start all over. Oh, optimize optimize your database and clean up transients, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another thing. So there, there there's so much to do when making a website run faster, and it's a never ending thing. You have to be monitoring it on a regular basis. All right, I think that wraps us up. That covers up everything we've like or we we've got here. I think we'll call it a day. Let's have a little music to carry us on out of here. These are the days of thunder. We're going to make time stand still. <laughs> in the wall Sometimes I feel so uptight I just can't sleep at all Every day doing the same old thing We're losing time The weekend comes We gotta have some fun and rewind These are the days of thunder Alrighty, folks, that's all we got for you now. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care.